My Hero Academia Chapter 380 is bound to be an interesting one, but we're a week away from it, I believe, or I think we're still on break, actually. So I'm going to talk about my expectations for the chapter so we can kind of just theorize on what's going to happen over the course of the next week. First off, I think there's a chance that Manoma might save the heroes. The heroes are having some trouble against the villains as My Hero Academia reaches its climax, but is there an unlikely hero that can completely turn the tides for Deku and the others? The unlikely hero that we're talking about is Nato Minoma, who was using his quirk to copy Aizawa's erasure, keeping Shigaraki nerfed for the final battle. But now Minoma has been taken out by twice clones. We know that Minoma has told Aizawa that he wants to be in the history books when this battle was written about as the one who helped them win. But what could he do now that twice has him out of the battle? Well, could Minoma actually copy twice's quirk to make an army of trash talking Minomas to make his own sad man's parade? This would be a real Really interesting development since Manoma has a completely different personality than Twice, but he still wants to be the main character, so I wonder how his clones would act if he got a hold of Twice's quirk. The other thing is Manoma is able to copy more than one quirk at a time, but he can't use multiple copied quirks at once, so he has to choose between the ones that he has stored and also take note of the time limit that he has on the stored quirks one at a time. We know that the effects of Manoma's quirks stay after the time limit runs out though, thanks to the class 1A versus 1B battles, so even when the time limit for the clones runs out, they should still stick around. But with so many Monomas, the question is, would they all still have Erasure? And even more importantly, would they have access to Kurogiri's quirk, meaning that they can now completely manipulate the battlefield in the hero's favor, while the real Kurogiri is crashing or having some sort of weird, I don't even want to call it a hardware issue, he's just having some issues. Could Monoma completely shift the tide of the war towards the side of the heroes? What are your thoughts in the comment section below, and if Manoma did create his own version of Sad Man's Parade, I want you to tell me in the comment section what you think he would call it. Now, moving on to what else I think we could see in the chapter, we've seen that Deku has sent Shigaraki flying out of the UA Sky Cage, and now the two are on solid land in the same city as Central Hospital on the coast. Now, while Deku admits that Shigaraki has all of his quirks, so fighting on the sky base is useless and really only serves to put the people he knows and loves in danger, Deku has already taken measures to to prevent Shigaraki from using decay on the ground in the city that they've landed in by wrapping both of Shigaraki's wrist in Black Whip, which we know he can reinforce with Fajin and turn into Black Chain, which even the massively enhanced version of Shigaraki couldn't break on his own. Assuming that Deku is holding onto Black Whip and Shigaraki's wrist with all of his might to prevent that decay, Shigaraki is going to have to battle in a very restricted way considering he'll only have his feet and his head to attack with, and Deku can easily keep him away with Black Whip. So I expect Shigaraki to get absolutely feral and even pop off his arms if he needs to to reach Deku, and we'll likely see some crazy kicks coming from Shigaraki as well as interesting uses of quirks maybe from his mouth, and I think this would serve to further show us some more parallels between Deku Deku and Shigaraki, since using his legs and even weirdly shooting a quirk out of his mouth were both options that Deku has had to use when his arms weren't available. I don't think that we'll get an entire chapter focused on Shigaraki versus Deku though, but considering how short chapters have been lately due to Horikoshi needing a rest, it is also possible that we do indeed get a shorter chapter that just focuses more on this fight. There's also a strong potential for us to cut away to another area, right? Because there are other areas to cut away with, with other characters having fight that we literally haven't even seen the beginning of, but Horikoshi seems to really like the all-for-one in Shigaraki areas the most, so I'm willing to bet that we'll be cutting away from one area to the other to pick up on what's happening between Endeavor and Toya, as well as the battle between Hawks and all-for-one, as Ochako and the other students try to find a way to stop Toga and the Twice clones to be helpful to the heroes. We've speculated that Ochako could perhaps get a quirk awakening that lets her spread her zero gravity through the Twice clones, and I suppose if this storm keeps up, maybe Tokoyami might get enough shade that he could pull off something really powerful with Dark Shadow, but the one with the biggest responsibility on his shoulders right now is NG Todoroki, who has to finally put Toya down, who has all but prepared himself for a rampage. Toya is rushing towards Endeavor with his phosphorus move that he stole from Shoto completely activated, and it'll be interesting to see if much like Toya, Endeavor copies phosphorus upon seeing it for the first time too, with maybe some help prior from Shoto who could have explained it all to his father. Regardless, I expect the fight between these two to be brutal, and I honestly don't know if Endeavor has what it takes, but he does have much more experience, and he's just a tank of a human, so who knows what could really happen here. And we'll see if Endeavor can actually burn away his past, or if 
if he has his own idea for how to handle Toya that nobody will see coming. Either way, the rest of the heroes there need Endeavor to live through this battle because there's just no way Hawks is beating All for One alone, let alone keeping him from escaping unless he just continues to piss All for One off. But what do you think? Does Endeavor have enough left in him to fight Toya and then All for One? There's also the possibility, as always, that we could go to literally any other battlefield than the ones that we've already gone back and forth from. In one area, we know that Aoyama and Fatgum are together fighting against Gashly, I believe was the name of the villain. And that's one of All For One's assassins that were originally sent after Deku. This character tells Aoyama that it's clear that the heroes focus all of the heroes into the other areas and didn't leave much behind to protect Aoyama, which is perfect since the rest of the assassins who weren't shown will all be after Aoyama the traitor, since no one is allowed to betray All For One. Fatgum has already taken some injuries in this battle, and Aoyama was told that he can't necessarily redeem himself, but he can keep working to do right and make a difference. So you'd think that would mean that we would get set up to see Aoyama go off in his own battle, but I'm worried that Hori is just going to entirely skip that or make it anticlimactic and just really, really fast. And here's your reminder that on another battlefield, we have Kirishima, Mina, and others going up against the villains who took out Midnight, and these groups are battling right outside of where Gigantomachia is stationed. But the issue is there that there isn't really a core League of Villains member here, so unlike Spinner, who was able to get Shigaraki's hand to Kuragiri, I don't really have faith in anyone being able to set Makia free as much as I would love to see Makia versus Deku or maybe even Makia versus All for One to protect Shigaraki. I just don't think it's in the cards as it would really just kind of extend an arc that I'm sure Horikoshi really wants to bring an end to along with the series itself. But who knows, if it happened, it would be really awesome. And lastly, last chapter, we saw All Might leaving Tsukauchi's side to head out towards the battlefield. This was likely as the Twice clones arrived taking Aizawa out because whatever All Might has seems like a last ditch effort or a final option to help Deku out in a situation where Shigaraki gets all of his quirks back. All Might knows the dangers and he knows that if Shigaraki is allowed to just be free, he is going to steal one for all. So what could he possibly plan to do? In one of our most recent videos, we theorized on how All Might's briefcase could be filled with something that allows him to return to his muscle form for an extended period of time, and since then, we've listened to you guys in the community who suggest that what might be in All Might's briefcase is the finished version of the device that David Shield created to enhance All Might's quirk and allow him to fight at 100% again in the My Hero Academia 2 Heroes movie. This tech came in a briefcase as well, but it was ultimately stolen by the villain in the movie, Wolfram, and I believe it was destroyed at the end of the battle so David Shield would have just had to make an entirely different version of this. We've seen, however, that All Might was able to get Deku's gauntlets to Japan from overseas during a time where Japan had absolutely devolved into madness and you probably couldn't just order something on Hero Aka Amazon. This suggests that All Might still has ties to David or Melissa Shield and it's possible that over in the States hearing about the state of things in Japan, one of these two completed the headgear for All Might that he might now have in that briefcase. In this situation, I think we could once again be seeing those heroes rising parallel shining through since of course in the original ending Hori wanted to have Deku and Bakugo sharing one for all to defeat Shigaraki but All Might has already shown that he still has embers left in him after using his muscle form in front of staying in the black hero arc so could All Might come crashing down onto the battlefield in front of Deku and Shigaraki to help his student once again in a two-on-one fight to help Shigaraki finally give in because consider the fact that it does seem like All Might did leave Tsukauchi's area to go be by Deku's side but now now Deku and Shigaraki have jumped off of UA, so how else will All Might really get to Deku if he didn't jump down in his muscle form? If this is true, can All Might finally help save the boy who he didn't save? Tell me what you think in the comment section below, and if you're excited for My Hero Academia Chapter 380, sadly we have a two-week break, and I think it's we're kind of in the middle of it right now, but the good side of that is that it's giving Horikoshi some time to get some rest and be able to take a breather. So hang in there, and we'll be giving you guys more interesting MHA videos to fill that need for the next week or so, and thank you guys for sticking by me so far. This last week I've been a little busy with some IRL stuff, but we'll be back to regular content this week, and let's see if we can put out some stuff that you guys really enjoy. I'll see you guys soon with another banger. It's Pineapple. Peace.